Well, here it is. It's been a minute since I've been working on the boat. Um, had a lot of work stuff come up. You know, work for myself. So when there's work to be had, you got to get out there and get it. So it's kind of what I've been doing. Also, with some family stuff. You know, sacrifices you got to make for these projects. But I'd like to get back on it. Uh, just a little bit here, so I can put out this video. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna complete it. But uh, I just have a lot of things that kind of pull me away. You know, one of them is uh, one of my hobbies. You'll see here a link to a video. Uh, we'll go marlin fishing. I do a lot of marlin fishing in the Gulf. Uh, been helping a buddy um, help redo his his boat that I fish on. Luckily, and it's a great boat. We we just just started fishing on it a couple years ago. It took us took him two years to get it all redone, but he's totally redone it. It's super nice. You can see first first trip I went out on uh, on it. Uh, we caught a blue and missed another one shortly thereafter. But you know, here's a link to it. And, you know, I have some of those videos if you're interested in that. But uh, when I get back on the boat, this is probably the last time I'm going to finish up this sanding. Uh, i got a little bit, a few little spots of fair and compound that I'd put on a while back. You know, whenever the last video I put out, I'm going to sand those back today. Um, I just got a call actually this week. It's been a bit of a delay for them to get the Alex, the Alex Seal or Alex Seal, however you say it. Been a little delay getting the products in. The paints come in, but then I had to, I got some uh, super build. So it took a little while for that to kind of all coordinate, but it just called me that came in. So we're going to we're going to be putting that in probably on the next video. So this one's primarily going to be just finishing this up, maybe doing another little walk around, kind of looking at uh, areas. I, I know I'm going to have some areas, but I'm hoping that the Super Bill will take care of that. But I'm going to get after it here and uh, start start sanding on it. You'll see I primarily hit this side here, this the bottom of the hole, a little bit on this side, just a couple of places on the transom as well. And then we're just going to keep working at it. So this is actually a little bit of a look back in time. This was actually in late March where I actually come on the bottom of this whole side here. And, you know, it's been a thorough process. I've documented it pretty good. I did a little notch deal. Um, and in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do it again. Um, it this fairing deal is it's you know it's it's very finicky it's tricky and and knowing how to lay it on and how to layer it and what the process is so what i decided to do here was just do a thin skim coat all the way on this side on this bottom and uh then be able to sand it back and there's a lot of waves and all like what i learned when i put the last coat on is when i was using that that wide trowel to, to put it down there is that I, I had I had places in between there overlaps on how I did it. You can almost see it. But so what I decided to do was I just put a, as thin of a coat as I could on there and skimmed it, and, and then come back. And what we're going to do later here is just sand that back. But primarily this is kind of a look back, and then we're going to catch up with the sanding back on it. Uh, hopefully, like I said, this will be the last sanding deal, the last major sanding. There'll be some small portions. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a little while, how, I, how that how that chine, where that chine comes in right there on the bow, how uh, this action right here, you can see it starting to eat, eat it a little bit at that chine, and I kind of screwed, you know, it's just part of learning um, how to finish this stuff and make it all come out. you got so many different angles and ridges and stuff, especially right there on that, on that bow section, where you want that chine to just kind of go, go into nothing clean. Um, but not have it, you know, turning, turning up or down or whatever. And I'll talk about that in detail here in a little while. But other than that, you know, you can see just sanding away. Once again, this is a 80 grit paper, and um, I'm running through this. You know, this is probably about eight speed or four speed fast forward. Um, it's uh, it's still very physical. You know, it's physical stuff to do. But I'm not putting a ton of pressure. It's not like it's really, really rough uh, what I'm having to sand back. I'm just trying, once again, if I can use this fairing compound to produce a better finish, you know, once I get to this super build, high build primer, and then the finished primer, and then the top coat. Uh, but all that stuff will be coming, uh, like I talked about in the beginning there. So that's, a, you know, enjoy the sanding. There's a lot of it, and there's a few pieces in here where I'll stop and describe, you know, a few things. So. Um, enjoy and once again like I said I'm back on the project uh, a lot of stuff happened but we're gonna keep pushing forward and get it finished
yeah, you're going to see right here, kind of working, bam, that the paper come off. Um, once again, I did a thing back a while, a while back, and I tried to just take the paper off and put a new piece of paper on, but that dust, that fairing dust is so fine that it gets on that, that surface, and it just won't let that paper stick. So what I do is each time that I pull the, the uh, sandpaper off, it's an adhesive back uh, Dura Gold or something like that brand. Uh, I think I've described that before. Uh, every time that I peel that off, I take a, one of those little rags with some denatured alcohol and kind of wipe it down and then light it on fire so that it burns up all of the alcohol and stuff. And that seems to help that paper stick. And I have very few occasions where it, where it comes loose like that one did. But uh, I do remember on that one, I just kind of, I thought it was clean enough. I could just go back See, like I said, you can see some of the ridges and waves, the dark spots and the light spots. Uh, in this example, the dark spots aren't necessarily low spots. It's just in that it's two different uh, shades of fairing compound that's smooth and been sanded and whatnot. It, there, there may be a little bit of a ridge to it, but by and large, this side is really, really smooth. Um, we're going to know more once we put that super build on there and then come back with a guide coat beyond that, which is basically a, a, like a, it's a powdery substance that you spread all over the, the, the hull and then you sand it back and wherever you see the black of the powder, it shows uh, where the low spots are. A lot of people use uh, what they call a rattle cam, which I think is, maybe it's a special type of spray paint to do this, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm kind of leery of that. I'm sure it's perfectly fine. It's just. I want to make sure that I just put all compatible products together here. So I don't spend too much time on the chines here. This this side chine here, I probably should have done a little bit more on. Just you know, I know that it's gonna it's gonna come, but I'm, I'm just trying to move the ball down the field right now, and I'm gonna stop stop uh, obsessing over this so much and trying to make it right and and just go forward. Uh, hopefully, nobody ever sees the bottom except for me. I'm more concerned with how the sides look really than the bottom. The pad on this thing, you'll see from a different angle, it, you know, where it should be perfectly triangular, where that fiberglass overlaid and everything, it's just, it looks a little wonky to me, but once again, I'm, I'm gonna move on and uh, hurry up and get this thing flipped back over. I've already got a trailer for it. I was able to find a used trailer. You know, maybe this works for people. Um, I was able to find a used trailer and replace the the hubs, the rims, the tires, the have the bunks recovered, new strap, new jack, new springs. Basically, the only thing that's existing on the trailer is the aluminum frame and the timbers that are covered with carpet. And I may have to change one roller on it. And I, you know, I'll, when I get ready to flip this thing back over, I'll go over the trailer. But I was able to do all of that basically with a brand new trailer, um, but it's just an existing frame for half, you know, less than half the cost of a new one. So for me, that's going to work. You know, well, we're going to primarily be trailering this boat, so I want something that's dependable. I'll still need to add a, a, a spare tire and maybe a spare hub, depending on how much long distance travel in space and room. But yeah, you can see here on the transom, you know, it, it, there was a lot of stuff that went into that transom, a lot of overlays of, of layers of glass, and you can see this edge, that dark piece in the upper left-hand corner there. I'm starting to, starting to hit it a little bit. The paper's moving it, but there you can tell there's still some buildup I need to do right there. So it's, it's really close, and I'm hoping that that super build will get me there. If not, I can always come back and hit it with a little more fairing compound. And, you know, this is kind of what I was saying, maybe the angle you can see maybe when I get that other camera. I'm trying to trying to sand that pad and, and and keep it as flush and level and try and make it once again ge geometrically a good triangle. Um, I don't think at the end of the day it's gonna make a hill of beans. The boat's gonna ride the way it rides. Uh, so for me that'll be good enough. So but I am trying to work on it. I, you know, I, I, if something's off when I'm done I don't really mind that as long as I put the effort in to try and make it right. You know, I don't want to shortcut and be lazy. But if I, you know, if I put all the effort in and it's still a little different, it, you know, it's just going to be character, and that's uh, that's the way I'm looking at it from a from a you know a DIY builder. I'm not a boat builder. Uh, I'm a lot of things, but not 
you know, this is the first one I've ever done, and a lot of this stuff, especially this fairing, this fairing and sanding has been a uh, learning process, and for anybody who's never done it, you know, just mentally be in the right state that, you know, it's just going to be a process, and I'm probably pushing this too far with what I'm trying to do, but uh, it's a process. And then you see here when I get to the rake of the bow, uh, the arc of the bow there, I'll come back in a little while and you'll see it, and I'll actually take some paper in my hand and try and try and create a little bit of a radius on that point but right here i'm trying to sand from both sides to get a nice clean to not get a nice clean edge there and it, it gets pretty you know as far as sharp sanding it from both sides so i wanted to come back and actually put a little bit of a radius on it so that it's uh less prone i think to cracking from impact on hitting anything because i think you know regardless you're going to hit stuff running through the water This is just a tough angle here. Um, I, I, I have the camera up, one camera up on top of the boat, and the other one, you know, it's obviously from the uh, from the stern of the transom back that way. So it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing on the front side. But you know, primarily just shaping that front. All this is, is turned out pretty good, and now I'm just working my way back to the back. There's a few little spots that I'll show you. It's not as clear as I'd like, but I, you know, I, when I sit down here, I'll explain. What I'm doing is, you can see where I have all these circles. And I can feel this and it's all rough. This is still kind of high, right in here. So you just want to make sure none of this fresh stuff I put down is still really tall, really proud. So it's all pretty good. But that's all I'm doing is going through there and hitting where I put that new stuff like this is new. One thing I'm noticing, you can see where this was, this must have been some pretty thick putty. Because it already started kicking. So you got a little bit of a ridge right there. So that's going to have to be filled with something. And it just, I think it's because it's too thick. It doesn't, it doesn't thin down enough. It's not thin enough to lay really, really flat. You see me going along here hitting all these little spots. So I had that other side, the, the bottom of the hole. Now I'm just going over all of these little spots that I did last time, like this one. I'm going to do that all the way around. I've already got in the back. I'm going to come back up the other side. And I think that's going to be it uh, until I put the super build on, which shouldn't be too long. So hang in there. It's coming. talking about taking that paper and just kind of hold trying to hold it flat to the hull and on an angle try and work that work that little bow and put a little radius on that you can tell it's kind of getting late in the day just pushing that board around and doing all this sanding it, it, it wears me out I'm tired keep talking about it but one of the difficulties here you know, especially like with this angle you can see with so many different layers uh, of, of fairing compound and stuff that I've done and sand and then a little more here and then sand is, is you get all these different tones and, and colors and it's hard you know your eyes play tricks on you and it's hard to really see so that's why I'm gonna kind of just uh, rope it in and, and try and get it all one color where I can see a little better 
Uh, also, uh, another tip, you know, a good, a good set of knee pads, especially, you know, I'm working on concrete and I'm lucky to be working on concrete here to have a good surface. But yeah, a good set of uh, knee pads. You can see right here on this transom corner how it's <clears throat> got a little bit of a wave going through there, which is, uh, you know, a result of when I pull that skim coat down, that's just kind of how you get a little bit of wave going through there, that putty deals and stuff, and it's just it's not a perfect process. This is something else I realized. So you got this chine transition coming in here, and it's kind of tough with so many different colors. But I've made the mistake of turning this corner and sanding this way, like this. So what's happened is I've notched out a little bit of that chine there, on the end, what I learned, you gotta work this one that way. Okay, let that work out. Work this one that way, and then maybe transition it like this. But only coming from this side, which will taper that chine down wherever it meets the wherever it meets the plus. Um, but like doing it like this, you can see I started wearing into that chine a little bit. So um, I don't know if I might have to pull some more putty in there or not. Also, I don't know if I showed it. But I just took some paper, kind of tried to put a little radius on this the bow right here so that it's not so sharp. So we'll see how that works out. It's kind of tough to figure out how to make it uniform, so I just tried to keep the same angles and just work it. Hopefully it'll all, with the super build and all, it'll all pan out. We'll see. Just got a few more spots to hit here and that's going to be it for today. be about it for this one. I'm going to keep working on it. <laughs>